say, folks, before we get going here, we got a little ditto cam problem. It's working fine in the RushLimbaugh.com app, but it is not working on all browsers, Internet browsers. Uh, We're working on it, and we will get it rectified. I just don't want you to think there's anything wrong with your computer, nothing wrong with your connection. The problem is all ours. And because of that, we'll get it fixed very quickly. Greetings. Great to have you here. Off and running. We are brand new week. Broadcast Excellence L. Rushbo, your guiding light here at 800-282-2882 and the email address lrushbo at eibnet.us. Okay, so we have the preliminary numbers in and ratings for last night's Epidemic Awards. Uh, way down. I've, I've seen the preliminaries uh, minus 16% over, those are the early overnights over last year. And since the early overnights are the major metro areas where most of the delusional leftists live in this country, that does not bode well. By the time you get out into flyover country and the medium and smaller markets, the number is probably going to plummet even further. So if you didn't watch the Oscars last night, you are not alone. Now, let's stop and think about something here. None of the excuses that the NFL gives for its ratings being down apply here. For example, the NFL says, well, you know, we got too much football out there. Thursday nights is just too much. And, well, we have had a lot of injuries. We didn't have our stars on the field for many of the teams for most of the season. And there's too much football out there, Thursday night football. And we don't have our stars on the field. And they never get around to mentioning Kaepernick and the kneeling and disrespecting the flag and so forth. But the Oscars, I mean, that's a a once-a-year thing. You can't say that people are tired. There's too many award ceremonies. Although, you know what? Awards ceremonies are to liberals what the 4th of July is to Republicans. You ever stop to look at it that way? Their 4th of July, their independent, all of these award shows is where they get a national stage to trash America. And they make the most of it. And when they do, just like when the NFL had all of these people kneeling and so forth and, and showing disrespect, what happened to the numbers? They plummeted. In the NFL, they were they were they were they were trending downward anyway even before the kneeling began, uh, and that might just have been cyclical. But the kneeling really iced it and made the drop significant and consistent. But Hollywood can't say that; they can't say there's too many award shows, and they don't even play the anthem at the at, at, at the Oscars. So there's no way anybody can kneel. They just disrespect America for the whole show, except. There was one guy, there was one winner last night who praised America. There was one winner last night who thanked America. And he's a Brit, and his name is Gary Oldman. And he won the Best Best Actor Oscar for uh, The Darkest Hour, portraying Winston Churchill. And I got a note from a friend today who said, Rush... I agree with you. The Democrat Party is in deep doo-doo. The Democrat Party stands for nothing that it can be honest about. The Democrat Party really has been losing elections in droves since 2010. The Democrat Party lost a presidential race with a can't-lose candidate to an outsider who'd never been in politics before. The Democrat Party lost the presidency with an entire media industry opposed to the Republican Party candidate. The other way of looking at it, the Democrat candidate favored, chosen, beloved Hillary Rodham Clinton had the entire, not just American, but worldwide media establishment behind her, and she still lost. And yet my friend says they own everything else. The Democrat Party may be losing left and right. The Democrat Party may not have a bench. They may not have a clear front runner for 2020, but Rush, they own everything else. They own the media. They own pop culture. They own movies, books, TVs, TV shows. They they own everything. It make, so, so the fact that they're losing left and right 
it never appears that way, to average, ordinary, low-information voters. And there may be a point to that. There may be something to be said for it. Um, I, I didn't watch the Oscars last night, but I, I, I read, you know, during the night, I read some of the jokes. And I have to tell you, I, I'm, I'm long past the point of, of being mad about it. I've been there, done that. It just, it, it's like the NFL, Folks, when 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 the when the whole NFL debacle began, I just got sad. Now I, I'm not a I'm not big into movies and, and Hollywood like I was the NFL. And the NFL was a hobby. I loved it. I liked it. That's something I very very much enjoyed. And I just got sad when they drove me away, or, or or when they allowed politics to creep in and the whole thing got corrupted. And it just it 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 was impossible for the NFL to remain in my mind what it always been. Just another area of America, another area of our culture, which has now been corrupted and taken over by the left, just made me sad. And the Hollywood thing is much the same way because these people are dumb. They're just plain dumb. They're just stupid. They're ignorant. Whatever you want to say, they don't know what they're talking about. I don't know how much influence they have with average ordinary Americans, but beyond all that, it, it just the divisions in this country. I've played golf yesterday. More about that in a moment. And after the round, we're in the, in, the, in the dining room, and the guy says, what do you get Trump's tariffs? I said, well, what does this guy want to hear me say? What does he want to say? What? And I said, I think, they, I think they're a big mistake. And he said, yeah, right on. Okay, been there, got, got that over with. And we continued talking about things. And I asked, th- then they asked me, Rush, who, who do you think the Democrat frontrunner is in 2020? Well, let's see. And I started going through the names. I said, well, there's Elizabeth Warren. Eh, nobody cares about her, they said. Well, Bernie Sanders again. No, oh, Bernie Sanders. Come on, rush. Bernie Sanders is 95 years old. I said, you guys had better understand that Bernie Sanders remains the most popular Democrat presidential potential candidate that they have. And I said, then they said, what about Biden? I said, oh, Biden wants it so bad he can taste it. But Biden is going to implode at some point during the campaign. If he does it, he always does. So Biden, Focahontas, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, can anybody think of anybody else? Seriously, can anybody think of anybody else? Is there any? Oh, for, forget the who? The Castro brothers? You you talk about a been there, done that. I mean, how many years have these guys been living on the come? And they haven't even left home yet. Oh, yeah, Kamala Harris. Uh, that's the one I could get and out in certain sectors of the country. Of course, she's going to be driving them wild. But the, but the point is, who do they have? There's there's nobody. There really is nobody that lights up the country. There's nobody that excites the country. They're just in, in, in pathetic shape. And I'm not I'm not trying to jinx anything here, and I'm not by any means overconfident. It's just that they are not the formidable foe that everybody thinks that they are. It's other things that present that obstacle, but not the Democrat Party. And they still have to be, I mean, they're the people that get the votes. I mean, people in Hollywood, people in the media, uh, people in the music industry and TV industry are not running. Oh, oh, forgot the Oprah. The Oprah. But, of course, the Oprah has said she's waiting to hear from God as to whether or not she's going to run. And the Oprah is a clear reaction to Trump uh, winning. So it just – the point of all this is that they've got, they've got nothing. They are just angry as they can be. And the, the, the way this country is divided right now – Makes me sad. I'm being flat out honest with you. I read some of these comments that these people at the Oscars make last night. They're just dumb. It's just it, beyond being politically leftist and so forth. The things these people think and the things that they say are just dumb. And I watched Homeland last night. You talk about a show jumping the shark and going off the rails. And I hate saying that. I used to love Homeland. And, and I know one of the the founding creators of that program, Howard Gordon. I don't know that he's even involved in it anymore. 
you know, I'm, I'm kind of reluctant to talk about it. I don't know how many of you are watching and have not seen last night's episode. But what this season of Homeland is, is what the left actually thinks of Donald Trump and what they actually think of conservatives. And it is downright scary how stupid it is. It's downright scary just how plain dumb it is. We are becoming more bifurcated, balkanized, and divided. There isn't any overlap, meaning there aren't any areas in which we have much in common. There isn't anything that binds us together as Americans because a significant portion of this country doesn't even like the country anymore. And it may even be stronger than don't like it. Some of them literally hate it. And then there's a bunch of people that don't hate or dislike, but they join the cacophony of hate and dislike because they think they have to in order to stay relevant. Then you have what's happening on social media. Facebook and Twitter are literally using algorithms and human decisions to literally wipe conservative content off of their platforms. Twitter and Facebook are intentionally and purposefully doing this. And it's not going to be long before, and I'm talking just a few short years, there will not be any conservative content that you're going to be able to find on social media. And then it won't be long after that before it becomes criminalized. It's being treated in certain social media places. Now, conservatism is it's being treated as something criminal. And I'm reading a lot of conservative websites complain about this, and it's understandable. They're upset that Twitter's doing this to them. They're upset that Facebook's doing this to them. But And, and they're asking, they're demanding that Facebook and Twitter be regulated by the federal government. Here's some conservative asking for regulation of social media because they're being aced out. And there's a part of me that says, well, you know, if, if you're going to throw your... You're going to throw your marbles all in a platform run by liberals. At some point, you have to expect something like this to happen. I mean, if you're going to go on Facebook and use Facebook to build your audience, build your subscriber base, and fund your operation, when Facebook figures out that they're enriching and making popular a bunch of people they don't agree with and they start pulling the plug, it's really not hard to understand that you have a bunch of leftists at Facebook, a bunch of leftists at Twitter, and they don't like conservatives, quote unquote, polluting their platform. They're not the phone company. They're not this. They don't have to treat everybody fairly. They're publicly traded, but there's nothing mandating them. They can run their business however they want. But Facebook especially lured a lot of websites in. A lot of websites get all of their advertising revenue is shared with Facebook and some of their subscribers rather than building it on their own. I mean, it's much easier to grab an existing platform with millions and millions of people already there and then try to make your mark on that platform and get noticed. Understand the allure to that. Anyway, regardless of all that, the point is, is that while the Democrat Party is in a gigantic mess, and folks, do not doubt me, in a, in a political sense, it is. They don't have star power lined up to run for president. They don't have even one person that you can, yeah, there's the go-to. That's the person waiting to be, that's, they, they don't have anybody in their ranks about whom you can look at them and say, they're presidential, they're a problem, they could win. And yet, everywhere but the Democrat Party, the American worldwide left appears to be unstoppable and on the march. The media has long ago ceased to be what everybody thinks they are. And the root of it is that there's just so much plain ignorance and stupidity on the left. 
the product of bad education, the product of bad parenting, uh, the problem of Soviet communist infiltration for years now finally taking hold on university campi and so forth. And, of course, conservatism itself is not a bulwark. It's not unified either. You've got all kinds of fractious behavior and frictional behavior. You've got all kinds of animosity and anger and finger-pointing on the right as as well. And so it's uh, – some total of all this makes me sad. Just makes me sad for the country. It need not be this bad. It could be better. And I always hold out hope that it's going to be, that at some point there's going to be a bottoming out of some of the rot. But then when I see a map in San Francisco, they had to create a map of all the public deposits of human feces so that tourists could avoid the neighborhoods. And then they had to do a map of used needles. That drug abusers and others are using. So you people, tourists, residents could avoid those areas. I see wanton homeless growing in numbers in Los Angeles. I see all of these liberal enclaves, the whole state of California, liberal cities, and this stupid sanctuary city business. The mayor of Oakland warning illegal aliens when ICE raids are imminent so they can escape the law. The mayor of Oakland essentially shouting, 5-0, 5-0. And then you look and you find out that the constitutional rights of American citizens are being eroded and the left wants to take a whole bunch of them away while granting constitutional rights to people that are not citizens. I must take a brief time out. We will continue in due course. Don't go away, folks. Snurdly begging me during the break to tell him what happened on Homeland. You don't even watch Homeland. He said, I know, but what you said about it has me intrigued. Did you jump the shark stupid last night? Yeah, they did. But, you know, I'm conscious of spoilers for people that haven't seen it last night. But it's just, it's just stupid. Well, I could. I give a five-second warning, I guess. I'm just dumb. Do you know what the goodie bag last night was at the Oscars? The goodie bag. This is what all of the presenters and the people up here on stage get as, as a gift. The Oscar goodie bag this year contained a key ring size pepper spray, a gel paper spray, two personal body alarms, and a kit to test whether your drink has been drugged. And Harvey Weinstein wasn't even there. Then they created, they had a sculpture of Harvey Weinstein sitting on a sofa called the casting couch. As though it's a relic of days gone by. Two different kinds of pepper spray. And here's Jimmy Kimmel describing this audio soundbite number uh, 21. Jimmy Kimmel describing a penis-free Oscars last night. Just look at him. (laughs) Keeps his hands where you can see them. (laughs) Never says a rude word. And most importantly, no penis at all. He is literally a statue of limitations. Now, this this was heralded as what Hollywood ought to be. These are the kind of guys that Hollywood needs now after all of these years of, look, self-contained in its own bubble. It's a funny joke. But when you when you add the context to it and so forth, these people are just, I, I think they're going insane. I really do. Welcome back, Rush Limbaugh, the cutting edge of societal evolution. You listen regularly here, and you'll be on the cutting edge. You'll know what's coming before it happens, and you'll know what's hot before it's hot, and you'll know what to think of it as an added bonus. Here is Gary Oldman last night, the um, Best Actor Award for playing Winston Churchill in the Darkest Hour. My deepest thanks to the Academy and its members for this... um Oh, this glorious prize. I owe this and so much more to so many. I have, uh, I've lived in America for the longest time and I am deeply grateful to her for the loves and the friendships I have made and the many wonderful gifts it has given me. 
And I think, now I can't, I'm, I'm not for sure, but I've had a number of people tell me that was the only positive reference to America last night. Now you might say, so what, Rush? I mean, we live in America every day. You don't have to sit and sing its praises every day. Uh, that's the point. You have a three-hour-plus award show, and America gets one positive mention, and everything else about America is a joke or a criticism based on it's designed to make people angry at their country. They got one guy came out there last night evoking and emoting his pride and his gratitude and his thanks for America, which is so politically incorrect.